Have you ever wondered how the electric vehicle concept emerged in recent times? When we trace the government's view on it, you can see its influence in electric and hybrid technology development. Let's rewind to 1993. The Bush administration created the Partnership for the Next Generation of Vehicles, or PNGV. It was a collaborative research program established between the U.S. government, government laboratories, and the major automakers. GM, Ford, and Daimler Chrysler were the three main participating American automakers. The goal was to deliver cars with a range of 80 miles per gallon to the U.S. market by 2003. But in 2001, under Clinton, the PNGV program was terminated. This was because by that time, not one working concept vehicle had been put into production. It's interesting to note that both Toyota and Honda were excluded from the PNGV program. And that's even more ironic that the first hybrid electric vehicle to hit the U.S. market were in fact the Toyota Prius and the Honda Insight. Then in 2003, the federal government would actively support fuel cell research. But when President Obama arrived at the White House, his administration took the different stand. Energy Secretary Dr. Chu announced that the administration's first priority was transportation products that would reap results faster than fuel cells. In its place, investment centered on research and development of plug-in, hybrid vehicles, and purely electric vehicles. The Obama administration also set goals for EV sales and a little later eventually revived the fuel cell research. And then there was Trump. The Trump administration believed these technologies would drive up car prices and discourage customers from buying newer, safer vehicles. During his presidency, Trump deregulated and revised critical policies that would influence the industry. This era saw the decrease of car emission standards that had been adopted under Obama. Trump also used the weight of the federal government to override California's decision to set its own stricter standards on carbon emissions. All these measures didn't mean it held back the development of electric vehicles, but it also did not contribute to its faster growth. And now we have Biden. He's voiced more support for EVs and the infrastructure necessary to support it. For example, Biden pledged to invest $400 billion and clean energy battery technology and EVs. Under this Biden plan, there will be 500,000 new EV charging stations in addition to the existing 29,000 public EV chargers by the end of 2030. The goal is to drive wider consumer acceptance of EVs, which undoubtedly is good news for GM and Tesla, who are already investing billions. Biden touched on creating a cash for clunkers program to encourage Americans to swap their old gasoline cars for EVs. The current tax credit dates back to the Obama administration, with the federal government offering up to 7500 bucks in tax break for consumers who buy an electric plug-in. But the benefit caps out when the EV maker sells 200,000 units. Today, Tesla and General Motors have already reached that limit. By the way, did you know that long before Elon Musk made Tesla house with name, Henry Ford and Thomas Edison worked together to develop an electric car. More than a hundred years ago, these two American visionaries indeed tried, but sadly their endeavor didn't succeed. Not only was the product unsuccessful, but there are some who believe that they actually killed the electric car. Ford first rode his quadricycle in Detroit. That was back in 1896. At the time, he was working for Thomas Edison at the Detroit Edison Illuminating Company. And Evidently, Ford shared his plans for a gasoline car with Edison. Ford eventually left Edison's company to pursue his gasoline cars and followed his own company, the Ford Motors Company. Meanwhile, Edison was developing nickel iron storage battery technology. By 1914, there were rumors that Ford was working on an electric car that would be affordable. Speculations were the car between $500 to $750, with driving range from 50 to 100 miles on a single truck. Evidently, Ford invested some $1.5 million and even bought one 100,000 Edison batteries. They say Ford even bought a power plant in Niagara Falls specifically for the Edison Ford electric car. But sadly, the Edison Ford electric car would never come to be. It's been said that Ford wanted to use Thomas Edison's batteries in the car without any other battery power in it. Problem is, Edison's battery had high internal resistance and couldn't power an electric car. The project fell apart for various reasons. And there are even conspiracy theories as to how and why it happened. Henry Ford and Thomas Edison, two of America's greatest minds and innovators, almost made the electric car. Though their endeavor ended, the electric car idea would reemerge after a hundred years in our modern time. The Model 3 base price is just under $40,000, and it gives you 263 miles on a single charge. So base price per charged mile is about $152. We won't spend too much time talking about this model because it has just had its range update with a new price to match. But it's interesting to note that in 2021, the Model 3 became the best-selling electric vehicle in the Netherlands with almost 39,000 units 
already registered. The Model 3 is mostly made of steel with a small amount of aluminum. Due to its smaller size, it's expected to use less power than the Model Y and has greater range of travel. This is a Hyundai Kona Electric. With the Kona, you'll get a range of 258 miles and a price tag similar to the Tesla Model 3, just under $40,000. So we're talking $144 per mile. By the way, did you know that the Kona was named after the western region of the island of Hawaii? Hyundai claims that the name and progressive design of the car intentionally reflects the modern consumer's lifestyle. The Kona name also continues Hyundai's tradition of naming SUV crossovers after famous travel destinations, including Creta, Santa Fe, Tucson, and Veracruz. The Kona Electric's aggressive regenerative braking system allows for one-pedal driving and helps extend the range of what Hyundai claims is 258 miles. That's just one mile less than the Chevy Bolt EV. The Kona Electric's fuel efficiency equivalent rating from the EPA is 120 MPGE combined. Test the Cybertruck. You get 500 miles of range for $70,000, which puts it at a base price of $139 per mile on a single charge. According to a survey conducted by the automotive research and sales website CarGurus, the Cybertruck was indeed voted as the most popular of electric truck designs. Believe it or not, an impressive 31% said they prefer the angular, brutal steel of the Cybertruck. At release, there will be three versions of Cybertruck to choose from. Basic single-engine four-wheel drive, twin-engine four-wheel drive, and three-engine four-wheel drive. According to Tesla, the base single-engine model will be able to reach 60 miles an hour in 6.5 seconds and travel an estimated 250 miles on a single charge. The twin-engine all-wheel drive truck will reportedly get to 60 miles an hour in four and a half seconds and provide a 300 mile range. And the top tier all-wheel drive three-engine model with a claimed 500 miles of range is expected to hit 60 miles an hour in less than three seconds Towing capacity is said to range from 7,500 pounds for the single engine model to 14,000 pounds for the three engine version. Don't forget Tesla's claiming a 3,500 pound payload capacity. It's the Model 3 long range version. We're talking 353 miles for a car that's under 49 grand, so that means $138 for the mile. So what's the difference between the Tesla Model 3 versus the Model 3 long range? The major difference includes the dual motor all wheel drive and a larger battery capacity, which enables the Tesla to have greater range and faster acceleration. Otherwise, the other specs are generally the same as the standard version, although the latest upcoming model should have an updated interior and refreshed exterior design. The 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EV is the number one in base price per mile effectiveness. Its price of $32,000 delivers 259 miles, which puts it at $123 base price per mile on a single charge. The Bolt EV is a front-engine, five-door, all-electric, subcompact hatchback. Did you know that it was designed and manufactured in partnership with LG? As of June 2015, some 50 hand-built Bolt prototypes have been tested at General Motors test site at Milford, Michigan. Vehicles have been tested for driving, dynamics, handling, comfort, quietness, charging capability, and energy efficiency. The Bolt EV has a combined EPA range rating of 238 miles. For city driving, the range is 255 miles. But on the highway, the range is only 217 miles due to its high drag coefficient. That being said, there is a known case where one Bolt owner was able to drive across Maryland from McHenry to Ocean City covering some 313 miles on a single charge. As of July 2017, the Chevy Bolt was the only plug-in electric vehicle with an MSRP under 50 grand and over 200 miles in range. All other electric vehicles below this price point delivered less range, with the only exception being the Tesla Model 3. So what's the reality of the electric vehicle? You might be surprised to hear that Toyota isn't buying the hype. Their current CEO recognizes that technological advancements are making electric cars cheaper and regulators are pushing to ban gasoline cars. Toyota remarked that Japan would run out of electricity each summer if all cars in the country were powered by electricity. He estimates that the infrastructure needed to support a society made out of electric cars entirely would cost Japan somewhere between 14 to 37 trillion yen, which is about 135 to 358 billion US dollars. Plus, most of Japan's electricity is generated by burning coal and natural gas. So imagine if all cars in Japan were fully electric. That means they'd need to burn more coal and natural gas, which means they increase greenhouse gas emissions, which is ironically counterproductive. Today, Toyota is a leader in hybrid gas electric vehicles, which is authorized under Japan's federal regulator. But the company doesn't have any all-electric vehicles in the market today. Maybe the future belongs to hydrogen cars. Stay tuned for a future video on that. But you tell me, do you have an electric car? Are you thinking about getting one? What's your favorite electric car and why? Please comment below and share. If you enjoyed this episode, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.